and uh, listen to the latest. What is happening in Gaza is a very dangerous situation. And we need serious efforts to be pursued. And the Israeli occupation forces, they take responsibility for what is going on. Every day Gaza is being bombarded. We today are once again witnessing the truth, the true nature of the situation. That we insist that the rights must be given back to the Palestinian people. There will not be any peace, any security, if the status quo continues. And there won't be any peace, any security, as long as the Israeli occupation continues. What is happening today is only one chapter or one phase. Wait. What has occurred? We must reevaluate the Arab stand. We must reevaluate every step. This is our approach. This is the approach we must take. We want democratic change, and this will open the world for more, for more efforts to be pursued. The demands of the Palestinian demands today has negative repercussions on all of us, and so we must won't bring about a solution. Once again, I stress that the pre-requirement to ending all of this violence is to establish peace. The occupation is the source of the problem. The key to achieving peace is to put an end to occupation. Israel will not witness stability and peace in the region. Israel will never witness any security improvements as long as it continues. And the Arab League intends to pursue this matter with the international community. Of course, Israel is trying to buy more time only. And the Security Council is called upon in order to prevent Israel from playing this game once again and going ahead with buying time. But the international community has agreed on all of these uh, issues in previous decisions. However, the Arab League has not committed itself and it gave Israel a chance, chance after chance, and it provided Israel with protection in order to run away from its responsibilities regarding all of his previous decisions and Israel was also given an opportunity to further increase its negative behavior and we all pledge we all pledge to the Palestinian people in Gaza and everywhere we pledge to them that we will provide all the support and the assistance in order for them to confront this aggression which includes a lifting of the siege and opening the border crossings and this chance has ended and so I call on the Palestinian people with all of the all of the components of the Palestinian people to stand united and to work for the sake of a comprehensive Palestinian reconciliation because this is a first and foremost guarantee in order to fulfill the aspirations of the Palestinian people in ending the occupation and building an independent state. Mr. President. Based upon everything I said, the Arab Council of Ministers is called upon to reconsider its options, its options which it relied upon in order to manage the Arab-Israeli conflict. We are also called upon to stand and look at the mechanisms which have proven to be a failure in addressing the roots of this conflict and the reasons behind this conflict which are related to ending the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. I allow myself to wonder and to ask 
What is the reason behind the so-called peace process of the continuation of this so-called peace process? There is no peace behind this process. What is the reason behind the quartet supporting the so-called peace process at the time where it's not doing anything? Can't we ask what peace are they talking about? What process are they talking about? What we Arabs want is to end the occupation and achieve peace and establish a Palestinian independent state in the 1967 borders with, Jeru with East Jerusalem Al-Quds as its capital. The conditions of this peace are very clear including the Arab Initiative which was launched in 2002 in the Arab League Summit in Beirut and in light of what has happened before, in light of what we are witnessing today, the comprehensive aggression comprehensive aggression on the Gaza Strip, I call on this council to take a serious stance and to completely reevaluate this issue. We can no longer we can no longer accept incomplete initiatives and meetings which have no benefit whatsoever. We must also have serious take clear action with the influential countries to take this issue back to the Security Council so the Security Council can take responsibility because it is concerned with international peace and security. And in conclusion, I call on the Council to reconsider all of the previous initiatives and to issue recommendations regarding re-evaluation of the Arab stance towards the Arab-Israeli conflict, which includes the continued Arab commitment to the peace proposal to the initiative and this council will issue its recommendations to an emergency meeting which should be held as soon as possible. So there must be immediate Arab coordination and contacts must be held with all of the concerned sides in order to deter the Israeli aggression and to immediately achieve a stop to this aggression and there must also be Arab unity regarding decisions towards the European countries and how they deal with the products of the occupied territories in uh, Palestine. Mr. President, there are committees and they must now discuss the re-evaluation of the Arab stance towards the Arab-Israeli conflict. We cannot continue forever in being partners of what Israel is giving, of the ideas being proposed by Israel. I, I mentioned, for example, the quartet and the peace process. We must immediately call for reconsidering all these matters. And thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Now I give the floor to the Foreign Minister of Palestine, Dr. Riyad al-Maliki. Mr. President, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, I pray for the souls of our martyrs in Gaza and we wish a quick, a quick healing for all of our injured or our wounded. I thank you very much for holding this emergency meeting for the Arab foreign ministers to discuss the latest Israeli aggression on our Palestinian people in the beloved Gaza Strip. This aggression represents or oh, Gaza represents a part of our occupied territories, which is part of our state. I, on behalf of all of you, I would like to salute our people who are standing with steadfastness in Gaza and also the West Bank and Jerusalem Al-Quds. We strongly condemn this aggression and we hold Israel responsible completely for this aggression, which is considered a clear violation of international law. Mr. President, this scenario which we are witnessing today and which began just a few days ago is a repetition of a previous scenario which we witnessed, all of us, and we bore witness to what occurred before. Four years ago, and now once again, this is being repeated, the same scenario, the same excuse, the same means, the same weapons, and the same destruction, and the same martyrs. However, under different names, we feel a lot of pain when after the destruction, the big destruction which we witnessed in the Gaza Strip four years ago and after the killing which led to thousands of people, of our people losing their lives and tens of thousands were wounded and more than 30,000 homes were destroyed 
and before the wound was sealed and before we were able to provide our wounded with the treatment and before rebuilding what was destroyed, once again we have a repetition towards the Palestinians, killing and destruction. The blood of the Palestinians are being spilled and their children are being killed and the women are being killed as if we haven't learned the lessons of the previous sufferings to witness once again these sufferings and this catastrophe. So we call for holding an emergency Arab League session as soon as possible, an urgent summit to focus on this catastrophic situation which is being repeated in Gaza and is continuing in the rest of the occupied territories. My question is, if the Israeli occupation and its military force, if it's able to once again launch an aggression on the Gaza Strip as if nothing has happened since its last aggression, were the Israelis not convinced that nothing has changed in general? It would not have done this if it was convinced that nothing had changed. But like we'd like to tell the Israelis that the Arabs of today are not the Arabs of yesterday. After the aggression which occurred between 2008 and 2009, we weren't able to lift the siege on our people on Gaza. We weren't able to translate the resolutions of the article of Revolution 1669. We weren't able to lessen the hardships and sufferings of our people. We weren't able to rebuild the Gaza Strip. We weren't able to transfer a new image to Israel which says that the Arabs won't accept and won't allow the status quo to continue. The real challenge, the new challenge which we are up against today is not that Israel hasn't changed its policies. As we Arabs hadn't changed our policies over the past four years and we lived with the situation as if it is a normal situation. The new challenge is that Israel is challenging us all. It is challenging the Arabs once again. It doesn't care about the Arabs' reactions, even the reactions of the world. It is spilling the blood of the Palestinians. It is destroying as it wants in the Gaza Strip, just as it does every day in the West Bank, just as it kills and it destroys and steals territories and arrests people and builds settlements in the West Bank, just as it does every day in Jerusalem Al-Quds. We must show Israel today that we have changed. We have, must show Israel that the Arabs will not accept a continuation of this aggression and this occupation. The Palestinian leadership stands with its people in the Gaza Strip and it supports them with everything it has available, although we don't have a lot of capabilities available. At the time whereby we condemn this continued Israeli aggression against a Palestinian citizen, against a Palestinian infrastructure, against the daily life and security of the Palestinians, at the same time we hold Israel completely responsible responsible for the repercussions of this aggression. We also hold the international community responsible for the continuation and the repetition of these aggressions on the beloved Gaza Strip. And the silence of the international community is encouraging the Israeli occupation to continue with these aggressions and is pushing the Israelis also to go ahead with these aggressions without paying any attention to the international law and to the Geneva Convention. And so, at the time where we call on the international community to pressure Israel in order to lift the ongoing siege on the Gaza Strip, we also call on the international community to assist in opening all of the border crossings to the Gaza Strip without any well, without any reservations, all of them, without any exception. We also call on the international community to provide all the emergency assistance to the Gaza Strip, the medical assistance, all needs all humanitarian needs and in this perspective we must express our complete thanks and appreciation to the leadership role which is being played by Egypt in its efforts in order to stop the aggression and impose a truce and provide all humanitarian needs which are necessary and the visit which was paid by the Egyptian Prime Minister at the very beginning of the aggression this was a clear expression and an honest expression regarding the honest Egyptian stance which we have gotten used to in the Gaza Strip and in Palestine we also highly value the role of Tunisia and the visit which was paid by the Tunisian Foreign Minister Rafiq Abdel Salam. We also highly value the stances of all of the Arab states which expressed its solidarity and its support for the steadfastness of our people in Gaza. 
what is required is strong Arab support, not just political support, but also economic and financial support in order to support and enable our Palestinian brothers to achieve victory against the occupation. What is required is to hold an emergency Arab League summit in order to address the continuation of the occupation and the aggression on the Palestinian people and against the Palestinian territories. What is required is to lessen the life of the occupation by further enhancing the abilities of the Palestinians to confront by supporting Palestinians in different growth projects. What is required is to isolate the Israeli occupying policies internationally by uncovering these policies on that level. What is required also is to take advantage of the Arabs' economic and political and investment ties with the world countries in order to get stances of support, stances which support the Arab position and the Palestinian position. There must also be unlimited financial support for the Palestinian economy so that the Palestinians will be able to focus on their main battle in confronting the occupation. What is required is to support the building of hospitals and schools and universities and infrastructure. What is also required is to support the building of factories and houses. Also, financial support for salaries. What is required is to reconsider the Arab investments and focus these investments in order to help Arab independence and independent growth and in order to specify a clear stance towards those countries who allege that they support the latest Israeli aggression on Gaza or those countries who refuse to support the Arab and Palestinian proposal for a non-membership or a membership status and the General Assembly. So in the light of these circumstances, we call on the Palestinian factions to implement the reconciliation which was agreed upon in Cairo. And for, finally, at the time where we call on you to visit the bleeding Gaza Strip, we also call on you to visit the remaining parts of Palestine, all of Palestine, especially West Bank which has taken prisoner, and Jerusalem al-Quds. We'd like to remind you that the West Bank is still under occupation and the Israeli settlement activities are destructive and they are even killing measures. They are measures which lead to death, death measures. And your mosque, Al-Aqsa Mosque, is also in danger. So stand up for the sake of achieving victory and saving Al-Aqsa Mosque, as you have shown time and again from your love from Gaza and Palestine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. I'll give the floor now to Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim, the Qatari Prime Minister and the Qatari Foreign Minister and the head of the Arab Peace Initiative Committee. Go ahead, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Mr. President, in the name of God the Merciful, at the beginning we'd like to pray for the martyrs, we'd like to pray for the martyrs of Palestine and we pray that God have mercy on their souls and we pray for their families. Actually, I would like to speak very frankly regarding what is going on now, what is going on today. I don't want to say at the beginning that our meetings have become a waste of money and a waste of time. Actually, these meetings are a waste of money and time. Mr. President, you said and you mentioned wolves. Wolves, they eat sheep. And unfortunately, they are not wolves, but most of us have become sheep. The stance today requires from us to take the measures which were mentioned by the Arab League Secretary General. We must reconsider today. We must honestly reconsider, sincerely reconsider. We know what happened in the aggression which occurred in U 2008. And we know what the situation was back then. And we also know who conspired and who didn't conspire at that time who conspired against the Palestinian cause, of course. Our brothers in Palestine need honesty from us. What can we do for them and what we cannot do for them? We cannot give them hopes, hope which is bigger than what we can really do on the ground. The least, as you know, Mr. President, 
the least we can do is the financial resources which we had, which we announced. Until now, the financial assistance which we had announced before hasn't been sent. None of this assistance hasn't been sent to Gaza. Most of us Arabs contributed to this siege on Gaza from the air, land and sea. Most of us contributed. Unfortunately, we helped in isolating our brothers. So, if we are not able to achieve victory for them, at least let us not be part of the siege or the isolation. Today, very recently, we accompanied the Qatari Amir in a visit to Gaza and we saw the situation there. We saw how the families lived in destroyed homes and we saw also the sewage system, the unhealthy sewage system which flows amongst the people, which surrounds the people. We also saw a situation which no Arab or Muslim can accept, or any non-Muslim even could accept. Today we are meeting, and I don't want to speak about the aggression. I want to speak more because the aggression, we didn't declare a war, honestly, and we call for a peaceful process. This peaceful process hasn't taken place. However, what we can do is assist. We can discuss the means of assisting our brothers in the Gaza Strip and the remaining parts of Palestine. The Gaza Strip needs for you to uphold your promises and to send the financial assistance. This will be a source of strength for your colleagues in Gaza. The people in Gaza need homes, need schools, need medicine, need hospitals. This is what we can decide and we will work. Not just deciding without taking steps. We must decide and then take concrete steps, implement. We have gotten used to saying and making statements without taking action and implementing these statements on the ground. I'd like to thank the Egyptian Republic. It's not surprising what we saw from the Egyptians. However, we must also support Egypt in this stance. And there must be a clear policy in order to deal with this issue. We know that Sudan was struck just a few days ago and we met to discuss the attack on Sudan. It's not the first time Gaza is being subject to an attack and even on the media outlets just a few days ago it was mentioned who killed Abu Jihad and this is something normal. Nobody whether Arab or non-Arab made any moves in this regard. So actually, I do know that there is an Arab awakening. I do know that there is an Arab situation which is changing. However, I believe that we need a clear policy and we need a clear agenda and program to deal with this situation. This situation is destroying the Arab world and is dividing the Arab people with regards to how to deal with the Palestinian cause. There will be no peace process, there is no peace process actually, and there is no marginal or sideline negotiations. The quartet is not working efficiently, so I believe that we need to reconsider. We need to seriously reconsider this process, and we must reconsider in practice, not just for the sake of speaking, not for just for the sake of statements in front of the Arab people. The Arabs have listened to a lot of what we said, but we haven't implemented anything. So today we will issue a declaration, we will agree to a declaration. What does this declaration mean? The declaration doesn't mean anything, because it is clear what is going on. We need to do something tangible on the ground for people who are suffering humanitarianly. I'm not speaking about a war. I'm not speaking about military steps. I know our capabilities and I know our determination, our Arab determination. What I'm speaking about is humanitarian assistance, standing in support of the Palestinian people as Arabs, as our brothers. So I sincerely wish that we can go ahead and issue recommendations in order to implement the pledges which were made by our governments to financially assist the people of Gaza, to financially assist the catastrophic humanitarian situation in Palestine. Mr. President, I also sincerely hope that there will a clear stance and a comprehensive review regarding this matter. We cannot let anyone speak on behalf of the Arabs and take advantage of the Arabs. 
as they wish and leave the Arabs whenever they want. Nobody should take advantage of us, whether someone close or someone not close to us. We must have a clear program and whoever does not behave according to our program must know that he has no place amongst us, has no place as a friend or a brother of us. So I believe that it's okay to issue a declaration. However, what will we do? What will you do and what will we do? Thank you, uh, Sheikh Hamad. Now I'll give the floor to the Foreign Minister of the Egyptian Arab Republic, Mr. Mohammed Amru. Thank you very much, Mr. President. First of all, I would like to welcome all of you to Cairo, although I would have wished that this welcoming would have come in better circumstances because we are currently witnessing unfortunate circumstances whereby our brothers in the Gaza Strip are being subject to a blind aggression. Our brothers in Gaza who haven't awakened yet from the aggression which was launched in 2008 and 2009, that aggression which destroyed the Gaza Strip, and after it destroyed the Gaza Strip, we saw the siege which prevented even the rebuilding of what was destroyed or bringing life once again to something normal or something resembling normal. This Gaza Strip which is still suffering from this siege is now today being subject to an aggression. Egypt, Egypt, Egypt of the revolution of the 25th of January is taking steps with all determination with its colleagues in Gaza. We support them in their pain and we will provide them everything we can, all assistance which we can. We will not allow the imposing of a siege which leads to their hunger and leads to forbidding them from the basic needs because this is against all of the human norms and also against all of the international laws. So we will not be partners in such an issue. So based upon this, the Egyptian leadership took decisions recently. It took the decision to open the Rafah border crossing 24 hours in order to allow the humanitarian needs to enter, in order to allow all assistance to enter, in order to, in order to provide our brothers and sisters in Gaza, everything they need, the basic needs of life. And on the political level, the President, President Mohammed Morsi, over the past few days was in continuous and ongoing contact with many of the world leaders in different regions from Europe to America to Asia to Latin America in order to push them to intervene and in order for them to use their influence to put a stop to this aggression on our brothers and sisters in the Gaza Strip. And in this perspective, I would like to point out to what was mentioned by the Secretary General of the Arab League and what was also highlighted by our beloved brother, Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim, with respect to, to the time coming. The time has now come to reconsider, completely reconsider the way in which we dealt with this issue in the Arab world, the way we dealt with these matters in the international community with regards to what has come to be known today as the peace process. And this peace process has, been, has become emptied of its essence. It has become only a process without peace being at the end of the road. So I think the time has come for us Arabs 
uh, in this Arab League to reconsider the strategy. There are Arab initiatives and there is a quartet and there are different efforts which are being pursued and there are committees which have been established in different areas of the world to deal with this process. But we haven't reached peace yet. Decades have passed. The Palestinian territory is being taken away day by day and I do fear that just in a few years there will no longer be any territories to negotiate over. There won't be any remaining territories to speak about a Palestinian state. I am afraid that if we don't take any steps now, it will be too late. The time has come to take action. The time has come to take decisions. And I hope that decisions we take today will be up to the level of responsibility and will be at the level of the aspirations of our people. And we shall see how people today are watching us to see the results of our meeting and I hope we will be up to the responsibility and up to the aspirations and thank you very much Mr. President. Thank you very much Mr. Foreign Minister and now I will give the floor to Dr. Saad Din Al-Othmani, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the Kingdom of Morocco. Thank you very much Mr. President. Mr. Secretary General, our brothers, colleagues, ministers, all those who are present, at the beginning I would like to apologize for the delay. I was in another continent and participating in meetings. However, from this podium, I would like to salute the Arab League Secretary General and the colleagues, my counterparts, the ministers who called for this emergency session. I would like to also salute all of the Palestinian people for their perseverance and steadfastness in defending their rights. And I would like to especially salute the people of Gaza, Gaza, which is standing with perseverance despite the siege, despite the pressures and despite the shelling and bombardment, they are still standing with perseverance and steadfastness and they hold on to their rights and territories. We are at a historic point to take strong, effective decisions. As the minister said and as the previous speaker said, especially the foreign minister and my friend Mohammed Omar, the foreign minister of Egypt, all of the sons of our Ummah, they pin their hopes, they pin great hopes on this meeting so that this meeting can reach historic and effective results and the decisions so that the Ummah could abandon the previous means which it used to use or resort to in such an issue. The Kingdom of Morocco shakes the hand and stands in support of the Mujahideen in Gaza. It wishes them all the best. It wishes them victory. And we also call on the international community, which has always been silent to such crimes. We call on this international community to join those who speak with one voice, to put pressure on the Zionist entity and on Israel to stop these crimes against Gaza. And I would like to salute all of the articles, all the segments of the declaration which was prepared by the Arab League and thank you very much. Thank you Mr. Minister. Now I will give the floor to Dr. Maysa Al-Shamsi, the Minister of State in the United Arab Emirates. Thank you very much Mr. President. Uh, may peace be upon the Prophet. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General of the Arab League, Dr. Nabil Arabi, Your Excellencies, all those present, we monitored with anxiety and concern the Israeli aggression on Gaza. This aggression which has become a program and behavior which we have been accustomed to from Israel. The United Arab Emirates condemns this aggression which is being committed by Israel in the Gaza Strip. And we also, the government and the people of the United Arab Emirates would like to express its condolences to the Palestinian leadership and the people and the families of the victims. And we wish a quick recovery for all those who have been wounded. We would like to salute the Palestinian, the 
brotherly Palestinian people who are proving day by day that they are a people who reject injustice and occupation despite the aggressive policies and behavior from Israel in all different forms. This behavior which we have witnessed over the past few years. Our meeting today requires from us to take tangible steps and quick steps on all levels in order to stop this Israeli aggression on our brothers in the Gaza Strip. And we must also work to put a stop to this violence which is threatening the security and stability of the region. And there is no doubt that this campaign, this aggression also threatens the peace process and it also curtails all of the efforts which are being pursued. The international community must immediately take steps and immediately take responsibility to halt this aggression. And the Security Council must also assume its responsibility in preserving international peace and security. I'd like to point out to the declaration which was issued by the foreign ministers of the Gulf Cooperation Council in Riyadh on the 14th of November, which condemned the Israeli aggression on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. The Arab Ummah is going through a a very important phase and we are in need in invigorating the joint Arab efforts. We must also implement the decisions in order to unify the Arabs against the interventions in a joint in the internal Arab affairs. And these events well, you've been uh, watching the Arab League's meeting uh, that is being held in Cairo as the uh, prime ministers uh, of uh, the uh, various Arab states uh, discussed a perspective on Gaza. So there's a, f a whole range, basically, all of them saying that something has to be done against Israel and it is not right and that they even have to reconsider uh, the, their uh, situation, their relations with the Israelis, but basically not very much concrete at exactly what should be done. Again, the Arab League meets as the uh, bombs continue to fall on the people of Gaza. We'll be bringing you more on the story, of course, uh, right here as we get it in uh, the final result of this Arab League meeting. Well, let's look at some other stories now in the news bulletin, Palestinian fighters. Palestinian fighters set up their attacks against Israel. Now, their three rockets have hit an area near Jerusalem, Al-Quds. Another one targeted Tel Aviv where air raid sirens went off and people ran for cover.